435. 435. Thank you. is a Muslim from Kolkata otherwise originally known as Calcutta and I met him again ministered to him and he gave his life to Jesus a Muslim from Calcutta met in Madras the city of Madras and he gave his life to Christ so he was a tremendous testimony Sir Fries and Prabhakaran and Mohan and so many others there was another one from Netherlands Bryant Young, I met with him and led him to Christ. 20 years he has been coming to India to seeking peace. I met with him and led him to the Lord. So many names. And we need to take all these people in prayer to the Lord. That they will continue just like Prabhakaran did. So we are born and brought, like we read in, in the scriptures. God has called us to be a peace, a place of peace. to bring peace where there is no peace and we have that shalom reconciliation salvation righteousness of god and the peace of god everything we have so what is wrong in sharing this to other people in a nice way going down to their level and coming up with them and even in the context you know at the bedding this man told me sir be aware i would never give the gospel to anybody i said why you know did you know they can retain you for 6 months you know? and your 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 uh, a trip will be in jeopardy you know? what are you going to do you know? they question you and the evidence is there you passed out the tracts you gave the gideon bible and all that and uh, you did it so what are you going to do if they retain you for 6 more months interrogation this is that's fine i'll save my home town i'll be with my girls i'll still continue to minister uh, travis and uh, uh, brother sipas will take care of this and brother edwin is here and god will do what he has to do the church is not built on me it is built on jesus christ right so i continue to do that that's the way the sarfras came to christ and also the other guy mohan isn't that amazing so we are god senses to that particular individual 
so that we can be a blessing where salvation has to happen and all. That's why when we take it to the Lord in prayer, that night was a very terrible night for me. Lord, what am I going to do? This is the status quo. Every religious leader in India is telling like this. But I'm not afraid. And I preached on that and I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God. To all those who believe, you know, the Jew first and also the non-Jews, you know, the Greeks. Praise God. Let's sing the next one. Four. Yes, nothing but the blood. The blood of Jesus is going to always give us the power. 195. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. can save, transform, and help people. You know, next, next Sunday is supposed to be the baptismal Sunday, right? And June is not here. I don't know what's happening. But let's lift her up in prayer. June and her son Nicholas from California. He's supposed to be here this Sunday, Saturday. You know, uh, sometimes we make mistakes. I didn't make my mistake. I should have taken her right away to the river and baptized her that day when she got saved. We wanted to do it here at the church. That's a terrible mistake I made. Mm -hmm. I thought, Lord, please forgive me. Because in the New Testament, you know, Philip, he baptized the eunuch right away. What is going to hinder me? See, we look at some of these problems from a boxed, standardized approach, you know which I shouldn't have done it. And she has been struggling and struggling and opposing forces are going on. And yet, the blood can take away all the problems, you know, right? Lord, forgive me, Lord, where I have failed in that area, Lord. We lift up June and Nicholas, oh God. Let the power of the blood, Lord, prove that you are more real than all the opposing forces, oh God. Like the song we sang, oh God, we have our weaknesses, but your strength is made perfect in our weakness, O oh God. And we lift up June and Nicholas, O oh God, and Linda also wants to be baptized. She's here. Lord, we thank you and we lift up your name. Yes, Lord. Have your Lord way, O oh God, with the hell and all the problems that our church here is exposed to, O oh God. 
You have the answer, O oh God. Sometimes we create problems, O oh God. Deliver us from creating problems. Help us, O oh God, to be on the part of the solution that you have. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Let the Lord handle it. And what is the next song? 2, Two seven. 7. Thank you. Amen. 297. I love to tell the story. 297. going around take the offering are we going to do that today who are the two people well, we usually use yeah oh. yeah he has a nice picture Benjamin uh, yeah a couple of them That's right. But you know what? God never make a mistake. Amen. He's here because we are here. Amen.
offering. We present it to you, Heavenly Father. We ask, Lord, that those who give, we say, make it different. Yes, Lord. Double it, Heavenly Father, yes, for them, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Use this because, Lord, little is much when you are in it. Yes, Lord. Thank so we you. present it. Use it, Heavenly Father, to build your kingdom on earth. In Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Next team 529. I don't know whether you remember last time when I was here, we, we were talking about the Camp Canonicus. I don't know where the status quo is. They were going to sell that place. You know. Everything is going to be a topsy turvy situation. But there are churches who don't want to sell that property. You know. And uh, so there are people connected to came canonicus who are concerned about it they wanted our church to be involved in that you know, so that they, they wanted us to take a unanimous vote if you are for selling the property that's something if you are not willing to sell the property see this is where the membership comes in those who are members can say yes we want to sell the property or we don't want to sell the property there are a few people you know they are the board of directors they decided it, to sell it you know, like the lady who sold the parking lot next day, she contacted me. Would you like to buy it? That was a nice gesture. And she consulted Dunkin' Donut, Citizen uh, Building, and so on and so forth. And I told her, we don't have money, but we'll give you right up. We need have only a few people who need parking. You know. So she left six or seven, six spaces. You know. That was so nice of her. Lord bless Carol. She need not have done that. You know. She could have sold along with that. We have our tank there. So they made a sensible, nice decision, business sense. You know, and we always, always want more space, more this, more that, but we don't know how to manage it. Management issue, right? We have a big, we want everything big, everything fine and so on. We don't want to manage it. God is the manager. The Holy Ghost is the manager. He wanted to manage, you know. So that is the management problem they have. They have that also, what we call in the management situation, they have a systemic issue. You know? They're not able to generate money for a long time. Mm -hmm. Camps came into the, the American Baptist churches of Rhode Island came into existence because of the camps. Yeah. Many, many young people got saved in the camp and this and that. Now they are trying to sell it. Can you believe this? They have the four, 300 acres of beautiful land with water. They have other problems, yes? I think on November 3rd, everyone can go there and walk around. There's no buildings open, but they're inviting people to come and walk around the grounds. November 3rd, if you can, you know, just Sunday, go. Sunday afternoon. Sunday afternoon. We can do that. You know, we can all go and walk around and pray. Not just walk around, but pray. So God will do something about it. So those who are for selling the property, you don't know to put your hand up. Those who are not willing to sell the property, who are there? Yes, so the majority don't want. Yes, I'm also on the majority. <laughs> you know, let's like, you know, how many people suggested sell this property? It's a dump and so on and so forth. But the Lord has blessed this in such a way we are still meeting here. Isn't that amazing, you know? Praise the Lord. So I will convey that information. All right, before we bring the speaker to the podium, uh, let's sing that uh, song. Um, 529. Oh, how I love Jesus. <clears throat> Oh, how I love you. 
Jesus because he first loved us. That's why we extend our love to people. Yeah, we have a problem right there. Somebody created a problem. Right here at entrance to the church. Right? I don't know who he is. Does anyone know who he is? Nobody knows who he is. Right? And uh, he came, it seems, last Thursday night. I wasn't here. Who was here at the Bible study last night? You were there? And after the Bible study, this individual came asking for food or something. Coat. Coat. Winter coat. Winter coat. Winter coat and so on. That's all great. Yeah. They gave him food and coat and everything else. Yeah. And then he took that porch as a place to stay. That's not right when they have other places to stay. Yeah. And he was supposed to go to the team challenge. And it hasn't happened enough. So we need to pray for the danger. Does anyone know who that person is? You don't know the name, nothing, you know. So we Travis, operate on an imaginary basis. <laughs> know yeah. yeah, that we all should know him. But anyhow, I thought it may be Al, you know, but it's not Al. No, Travis was talking to him and trying to get him. To yeah, that's great. But it's, we don't know the person's name and no. he's, Al is not the person. I thought he was going to be here today at the church. The Lord didn't bring him to the church. So we know people are here only for certain things. What can I get out of the church? Yes. This church is not for that. As long as I'm going to be the pastor of this church. I did Gandhism more than anyone in this church. More than anyone else. I'm not bragging about it. I wanted to find God through charity. But what we see here in America is just the opposite. Just the opposite. If it leads to bringing people to Christ, we got to do it. But if it is not, there is something wrong in the system. We don't want to be a part of this. See, we have terrible problems of people taking drugs and all, all needles. We, I, we went to the meeting, thank God, for David Morales. And he came and uh, uh, took those two people away. Now we have another one. So please keep this in prayer that God will take care of it. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer and pray for the speaker and for the situation to be dealt with. Lord, help us, O oh God. Yes, we plead with you, Lord. You are the one who said, Lord, when we come to you, taking all of our problems and leaving it at your feet, O oh God, you give us wisdom and discernment to do what is the right thing to do, O oh God, for the right reason, O oh God. Help us do it right for your glory. Sometimes our motive is correct, O oh God, our method is wrong. Sometimes our method is correct and our motive is wrong. Help us, O oh God, everything is aligned for your glory, Lord. We lift up this individual, whoever it is, O oh God. He needs salvation, healing, deliverance, whatever it is, it is available with you, O oh God. Teen Challenge is willing to help. Lord, Rescue Mission is willing to help. And they don't want to go any of these places, O oh God. And they want to come here and cause trouble, O oh God. Lord, whatever it is, help us to deal with it. And you helped us to deal with the other two individuals. And Lord, especially Stephen, O oh God, who was very bad, O oh Lord, although he came here and caused trouble. Sometimes the enemy brings all this, O oh God. Sometimes you bring people. We don't know which one is which. Help us, O oh God, to discern in your name. And bless Brother Cephas as he is willing to share your word, O oh God. Let it bring glory and honor to you. And revitalize us, O oh God. Let the name of Jesus be exalted. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I thought I would fall asleep while I'm standing here, but the Lord hit me the grace. I don't have the jet lag now. Thank you, Lord. Edwin, will read this? Okay. Joshua 6, 2 to 5. Brother Edwin is going to come and lead in reading the scriptures. This would be better. For our guidance today, we shall open our Bibles and read Joshua chapter 6 and this verse 2 to 5. 
And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, its king, and the mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all you men of war. You shall go all around the city once. This you shall do six days. And seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of rams, horns before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around this city seven times. And the priests shall blow the trumpets. It shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ramp on. And when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall shout with a great shout, then the wall of the city will go up, fall, the wall of the city fall down flat, and the people shall go up every man straight before him. Good morning, Josh. Good morning. We have heard the reading of the word this morning. We want to welcome everyone who are here especially so of our pastor from such a good time with the Lord in India. We pray that God will continue to strengthen him, lead him, guide him as he continues to lead us, the flocks of Mount Pleasant. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Today, we'll be looking at when God does not make sense, what shall you do? Most of us don't want to admit it, but more often than not, God's instructions don't make sense. That's because God is not a sense God. He is a faith God. The question is, what do you do when God does not make sense? The gates of Jericho were kept tightly shut because the people were afraid of the Israelites. No one was allowed in and no one was allowed out. But the Lord said to Joshua, Jericho and its king, and all its mighty warriors are already defeated. For I have given them to you. Your entire army is to walk around the city once a day for six days. Followed by seven priests walking ahead of the ark. Each carry a trumpet made from the ram's horn. On the seventh day, you are to walk around the city seven times with the priests blowing their trumpets. Then when they gave one long, loud blast, all the people had to give a mighty shout. And the walls of the city will fall down. Then move in upon the city from every direction. But if you look at he said, Yeshua gave a long shot. But what was the shot? Scripture did not tell us what you should yell about. We just said, they should give a long shot. He said, we should just yell or what? Have you ever experienced a scenario in your life where God just does not make sense? 
Maybe you are thinking to yourself, I don't know if I want to answer that or not. Because I don't want God to think that I am not trusting him. Or that I am doubting him. I am just not going to answer that. Have you ever experienced? Or maybe you are thinking of to yourself. I don't want to answer that because I don't want to sound unspiritual. Well, I'm going to answer it for myself. And I am going to say yes. Yes, yes there have been times when God just does not make sense to me. Maybe I should clarify that. There are times when what God is saying to me or telling me to do or telling me where to go or telling me what I should do just does not make sense. In other words, it is logical. It does not fit into my, this is how I do my box. Now, I'm going to say something right now. Most of the problem that the children of Israel had was with the fact that God very often did not make sense to them. Many times God directed them to go a direction or to do a thing that just did not make sense to them. When God led the children out of Israel, the children of Israel out of Egypt, instead of taking them on the shortcut, he took them the long way around and he led them directly to the Red Sea. Now, let's be honest about it. That does not make sense. Ten different times the children of Israel, I could, God, through they have stubbornness and their, their rebellion, and was basically because God did not make sense to them. Job 19, 3. These ten times have you reproached me. You are not ashamed that you made yourself strange to me. You can see that Job said did not make sense of something that God had done to him. Now, I am no expert on this, but I have come to believe that the most important thing in the heart of God concerning his children is this. He wants us to believe him. He wants to be trusted. And he will do things and we will direct his, he will direct his children to do things that don't make sense to them. Sometimes I can say that God does not make any sense to me when he is silent. And I'm going through a lot of problems. Sometimes I can say that God does not make any sense to me because it seems that he is doing nothing about my problems. Sometimes God does not make sense to me because he asks me to do something that hurts my pride. If the question is, is there ever a time when God does not make sense to you? My answer is, most of the time. Did it make any sense to Naniam, Naniam that he could go and dip in the muddy river called Jordan? And he could be completely cleansed from leprosy? Did it make sense for the children of Israel to get up every morning and then go out and walk silently around Jericho? Except for blowing up the arm, um, the ram horns, once every day for six days, and the seven day times on that day, then shout. Does it make sense? Did it make sense for Peter to go fishing to get money to pay his taxes? Did it make sense, any sense, for Jesus to spit in the dike and make the mud and put it on the blind man's eyes, then to send him across the town to wash it off? Did it make sense, my brothers and sisters, for Peter to simply throw his net on the other side of the boat after he had fished all night and caught nothing? 
Did it make sense? Any sense for Elijah to cut off and throw a stick into the water where the iron axe head had fallen, expecting it to float to the surface? So I am going to ask the question again. Are there times when God does not make sense to me? My answer is yes. And I will even go far as to say to you that most of the time, God does not make sense to me. Let's go a little further. Does it make sense to you that you can take a piece of fabric and pray on it and then heal someone? Does it make any sense that your mouth, with your mouth, you can say, in Jesus' name, I draw the bloodline. And demons have to stop coming around you. God is not a sense God, Christian friends. He is a faith God. He believed that we should have faith in him. And walking with God is not a sense walk. It is a, a faith walk. We have missed our greatest blessing and greatest breakthrough in our lives. Because we won't do or say or go when he, where God says. Why? We have to ask. Because it does not make sense. We want God to be logical. He wants us to be obedient. We want God to explain everything to us before we move. But God wants us to move without him explaining anything to us. You know, there is a possibility that there were some scientific equations and hypotheses that went into the wall of Jericho coming down. There is a possibility that scientifically, somehow, the continuous blowing of the ram horn and the single storm of shout created a massive sonic sound wave that disrupted the molecules that, led, that held the walls together and it fell. Amen. That's possible. But God did not have a scientific conference with Joshua, Christian friends, and explain to him all the scientific details of his commission. He just told him what to do. And Joshua did it. That's how God works. He gave the order, no explanation, and he leaves it up to us to obey or disobey. It's possible that there were some kind of healing ingredients in the mud of the Jordan River that attacked leprosy. I say it's possible. But even if that is true, God did not explain it to Nehemiah. He just told him to go and dip himself in the mud. The point is, God knows all the logistics of why he does what he does. The way he does. And when he does it, but he does not require from us logistic agreement. He just requires faith and obedience. I believe when we are living in such a time that our very survival may hinge on the simple obedience to God's direction, even when they don't make sense. Yeah. In the last two years, it's been like we have been on a roller coaster in this country. And many times we have been able to make sense, we have not been able to make sense of what God has been doing or not doing. But I believe I have a revelation about that. I believe God has been allowing us to feel that way, to bring us to the place where we can walk in simple obedience. God calls that faith. I want to share this little story with you. I think it will add some gravity to this message. The story goes like this. When we were kids, Every, every so often, our dad would play a game with us. We took the same route to church and home two to three times a week for a year. For years. 
So we thought we could tell where we were at without looking. So we would close our eyes and Dad would start driving. And he would begin to navigate the route, telling Dad where we were on the route. Based on how fast or how slow we were going. And we were pretty good. So we would say, we are at such and such a place. And Dad would say, no. And we would be confused because we thought we knew the way it was supposed to go. And we did. But what we left out of the equation was, Dad never told us whether he was going to stick to the route we knew. Even though we knew the route we had taken so many times, we were not in the driver's seat. So we would be confused and we would think we cannot get home. We don't know where we are. Then dad would laugh and he would say, just trust me, I will get you home. Even if it is not the route you are used to or you are familiar with, I know where I am going. That little story is so powerful, and I think God is saying the same thing to us today. He is saying, if you will just trust me, I will get you home. I will get you through this. I know where I am at, and I know where I am going. Even if you don't know, the story finishes with this. Sometimes we will get aggravated at that because he was not keeping to our route. Friends, I wonder how many times we get aggravated with God. Because he is not keeping to the route we planned for him. We want to close our eyes and tell God where to go and what to do based on what we are comfortable and familiar with. But God wants us in a sense to close these natural eyes and just trust him and obey him even when, especially when, he does not make sense to us. If we ever get this principle, it would be wonderful. Because we will realize that it takes all the weight off our shoulder. We don't have to understand the mechanics or the scientific of it. All we have to do is do it. All we have to do is to trust and obey God. God says, stretch out the rod over the sea, Moses. But God, why? Why is the logic behind that? Which end do I point? How long do I have to hold it there? What is the anchor I supposed to hold it? How is holding my rod over the sea going to affect the water? Christian friends. But God does not get involved in any of that. He just said, do it. Filter the, the water pots with water. But they are asking for wine, not water. Why? Just do it. I'm going to say something pretty big here. As Christians, our biggest problem is not with the devil. Our biggest problem is with why God, why? When God when and how God how. We want God to answer us instead of obeying and trust the Lord. There's an amazing little chorus that says what we should be saying to God. It goes like this I say yes, Lord, yes, do your will and do your way. I say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and be when your spirit speaks to me. With my whole heart I agree, and my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. What do you do when God does not make sense? When he does not move the way you want him to? When healing comes in stages instead of instantly? When the financial breakthrough seems like it will never come. 
when the children you have prayed for and wept and traveled over since go so far away from God, what will you do? When you drop your ballot in the ballot box, but you don't get who you voted for, what will you do? What is the correct response? You keep on praising him, Christian friends. You acknowledge that he knows what he is doing. Oh, you trust. His trust is your Tommy. The main thing is that we keep praising him because praise is the voice of faith. Praise and be praised or complain and remain. Sometimes God say, march. Sometimes God say, stand still. Sometimes God say, be quiet. Sometimes God say, shout. Sometimes God say, wait for the water to part. Sometimes God says, step in so the water can depart. Sometimes God says, run to the battle. Sometimes God says, Christian friend, wait for the rustle of the mother tree. Sometimes God says, go. Sometimes God says, stay. Sometimes he says, something. He says, no. And sometimes he says, yes. Sometimes he says, not right now. Sometimes God will tell you to do will be the most illogical move that God possible could make. Hallelujah. In Joshua chapter 3, the Jordan River was at flood stage. God said, I am going to take you across. Joshua said, Hallelujah! How are you going to do it with the water flooding? God said, Tell the priest that bears the ark to take off their shoes and with the ark on their shoulder step into the raging flood water. I can almost hear Joshua saying, that does not make any sense at all. Do you know, do you have a plan B? Do you have a plan B, Christian friends? If that does not make sense and he promised to cross you on the other side, that we could consider, but Joshua obeyed. The priest stepped in and the water parted and they crossed to the other side. I don't know what crazy, illogical things God might be asking you today, but I can tell you this, your miracle, your healing, and your breakthrough is on the other side of obedience. Even when it does not make sense, Christian friends, just do it. God is not a sense God. He is a God of faith. He said, do it. He don't have to explain before you do it. He owe no explanation. Do it and know that the Lord is alive. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just commit these words to you today, Lord. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you guide this Teach us, Heavenly Father, how to pray. That we will not want, Heavenly Father, to explanation from you, but that we we'll obey and we we'll trust you, Lord. Guide us, Heavenly Father. Lead us. You are worthy to be praised. You are Lord of God. Thank you for just this day. Thank you for waking us up this morning. There are some of us who went to bed and did not wake up this morning. There are some of us who woke up a lot, who woke up in pain. But Lord, we say thank you for this day. Be with those that are not here today. No matter what the problem is with the Travis family, the King family, we say, Lord, you just touch. Yes, Lord. Whatsoever it is, just a touch. Lord, we thank you, Heavenly Father, as we get ready to send our mother home next Saturday, Lord. We say thank you, Heavenly Father, because she is there with you. Thinking how I got over. Yes, Lord. Her name has been called up, Yana. And she's there with you. Yes, Lord. Lord, we say thank you. Amen. Bless each and every one of us. Yes. The family members, brother and sister that are coming from all over this country. And those that will want to travel <coughs> out of this country. Yes, we say, Lord, yes. you travel with them. Thank Give you. them traveling message. Thank you. That next Saturday will be able, Lord, to lay her home. Yes. With this, we ask a many blessings, Heavenly Father. Amen. 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 Thank you. <clears throat> <clears throat>
Praise God. We act in love, in obedience. Trust and obey. There is a chorus, for there is no other way but to trust and obey. You know, when we trust and obey, we see the uh, effect is God is a God of miracles. He's a miracle working God. Yes. Down through the ages, down through every chapter in the Bible, we see God is a God of miracles. Yes. That's the, uh, the brother made it very clear that we have to trust and obey. Yes. Even when it doesn't make sense. Because God is a God of omniscience. Yes. What do you mean by omniscience? All knowing. You know. Which means God is a God of wisdom, God of intelligence, but He wants us to trust Him and obey Him. I was thinking about a little girl years ago in the 80s. Her father owned a beautiful swimming pool and I was learning swimming, right? And I was learning from all the others. At one point in time, we were learning to dive into the swimming pool. Just go dive into that. Some of you know. Those who were born and brought up here, you can do it. But diving was not easy for me, you know, but I learned it. And this little girl was standing on the stepping board and the father was down. He made a dive into the pool and was swimming. And then the girl wanted to jump. You know. But he knew that she needed help. So he told the girl, just jump. You know. And he caught her. And the girl jumped. Believed it. The father is going to take care of them. No matter what goes wrong. I said, wow, Lord, that's the way we have to learn to trust and obey. Because of you. God knows it. God is a God of wisdom. God of intelligence. But above all, God wants us to believe in Him. That is why God exercises His free will in telling us, just believe me. I am able, I can do it for you. So when we trust and obey and leave it to God, God will take care of it. We have a last song, right? 505. Love lifted me, praise God. That's a perfect song. It's the love of God that lifts us. 505. 505, I just got it. It's the love of God that lifts us because God is a God of intelligence. God is a God of wisdom. God is a God of omniscience. Although it doesn't make, God has given us common sense sometimes to act. What is the common sense? To believe in his omniscience. To believe him and then fall for his love. Amen. 505.
benediction and all those who came late you could put your love offering there and uh, praise God Lord we thank you that you brought us today oh God for all that you are doing here oh God is beautiful yes Lord what you are doing is wonderful you are the Lord God of wisdom oh God you want us to believe oh God until we believe like the message oh God trust and obey If you are watching this on the YouTube, yes. we pray and encourage you to believe and let go. Don't think about it in a logical way, whether this will work or not. Yes, it will work because God is a God of wisdom and omniscience. Once when you put your trust and believe him and let go of what you are going through, receive Christ as Lord and Savior. receive him as the healer and he will deliver you yes it will work lord i am a sinner come into my heart if you have never been connected to god that is omniscience omnipotence omnipresence that is god is a god of wisdom he can come into your life and change you around just believe like the message said trust and obey obedience is needed that's the most important thing obedience that leads to confidence that confidence will lead to what god can do in your life yes. that's a miracle yes. god will do it today if you trust and obey yes. and surrender yourself in the hands of god yes. the lord god jesus who came in the form of a human and took all our sins and sicknesses and all our problems and nail them to the cross and being the resurrected redeemer he can work with you work through you work in you but let him in first once when you let him in he will do it yes. and then it will make sense that thank you lord i trusted you yes. and you are the lord god of wisdom oh god we thank you and praise you and thank you lord for people who can be touched through this anointed message Lord bless each and every one who is here oh God let the peace of God let the power of God and the presence of God take over each one of us that we can take the church outside the church to release your miracle power and set people free in Jesus name amen hallelujah amen. praise the lord thank you lord jesus